Making Zork's Pet and Other Fantasy Creatures Part 1 Prepping and Blocking Your Sculpture so to give you guys just a little bit of backstory, this is Picasso, the creature that sits on Zorg's desk in the movie The Fifth Element. If you've seen the sci-fi classic, you surely know this little cutie. Um, I love this movie and I wanted to do a female version of Zorg. And after years of research and prep, I decided not to make the classic ZF1 gun that so many fans are fond of. The challenge really wasn't there knowing that so many people had done it so well. So instead I opted for a very unique take on Zorg. I decided to create his little mutant elephant anteater creature thing. This video series will be a guide for how to sculpt, mold, and cast creature props on a moderately large scale. It will be a guide that shows several industry techniques and materials that are commonly used. It will also elaborate on my plethora of mistakes, so you can get an in-depth look at how to create something of your own and just really get an idea of what materials will work best for you and your project. So happy crafting and I hope you follow along. First step is prep. Uh, that includes gathering as much research as possible. I always encourage you to take your time on this step because resources will often come out of the woodwork after you've finished the project, only to taunt you for not digging deep enough. It's good just to take your time and um, not rush into a project, especially when it comes to financing as well. These resources can include behind the scenes videos, art books, fan creations, cosplay, uh, which largely cosplay, it serves as a way to compare how you would like to go about the project, possibly illuminating a technique or material choice that you might have not chosen or forgotten about otherwise. So when it comes to a sculpture like Picasso, uh, the sculpt is completely 360 and it needs to be mounted on an armature, which is literally the framework on which a sculpture is molded with clay or uh, another material. And that's all that really means. You can use anything, but three things to keep in mind when making your armature. One, your armature should be um, big enough that it can counterbalance the weight of the sculpture to prevent it from tipping over, and also big or short enough to give you the ability to sculpt on the underside of the, the sculpt and on the top side without straining yourself. A Lazy Susan is an excellent addition to your armature, especially when it comes to number one about the ease of the sculpting process and making sure that you can get every angle. So a big shout out to Jesse Skellington of LarpHeroes.com for providing a Lazy Susan for me to use. Third, I recommend that you build a foam sculpt on top of the armature to reduce the amount of clay necessary and um, therefore to reduce the weight of the sculpture overall. This might not necessarily save you money, but it's something that I felt like would save me time and um, weight. Um, and then I used great stuff to form the starting body of the creature. Uh, aluminum foil is a common under sculpture that you can use um, in clay sculpts, but um, the great stuff gave me the size and sculptability I needed. It took um, the three to four cans of the black variety, but you can purchase AB expanding polyurethane foam. And I'll say that again, that's AB, two parts A and B, expanding polyurethane foam, which is what great stuff is, in bulk from a mold and casting supplier, a retailer such as Top Plastic, Smooth On, or Fiber Lay, but great stuff's pretty easy to find in any home improvement store such as Home Depot or Lowe's. This is called blocking out your basic shape, so don't worry about the details just yet. You want to make sure that you cover the entire area. Just heat the clay up um, with your heat gun or your toaster oven until it's malleable and slather it on. So Monster Clay first off is awesome. It's super popular with prop makers and cosplayers because it's oil based. It has a waxiness to it though, so it's not sticky. It's very firm for high detail work when it's cool and then you can leave the sculpture out and come back to it without as much worry that it will crack or dry out as you would with water-based clay. So overall I prefer it, but each clay has a purpose and I suggest that you try all the materials and learn the pros and cons. Here's your materials list. The oil clay is heat reactive, so you're going to be doing your molding ability mostly when it's warm and malleable, and your detail work when it cools down um, to get your hard edges and things like that. If your clay has gotten too warm, compressed air is a great tool because if you turn it upside down, the air that shoots out will, I think, be, I think it's nitrogen gas and it will freeze the clay. You can also stick it in the fridge or freezer if size isn't a limitation. I recommend the heat gun for target areas and the toaster ovens can be found at thrift stores of your choice for heating the entire tub of clay. So after the initial blocking, you'll start on your detail work. But wait! Two things to consider before you get into detail work. First off, when working with great stuff, 
you want to make sure you're pressing your clay really well into the sculpture um, because you might have void bubbles in the great stuff and so pretty much your clay will sink um, and you want to make sure you patch those holes now rather than later. And two, if you're replicating something, make sure that you take the time now to check ratios, proportions, and angles to assure that nothing is crooked um, before you start adding the details on, such as skin texture, wrinkles, and the like. Okay, I think that's all for that. So I don't really know where I left off last, but I've made some progress. Um, I'm going to link you some links down below that talk about um, sculpting techniques and tips and tricks and stuff like that because uh, I noticed that once I started watching more videos on experienced sculptors who were doing like maybe speed sculpts on YouTube, um, I saw things that really helped me um, finish up the sculpt. So um, after this guy is done, we're gonna cover it in silicone and cover that in fiberglass and then we'll be ready to create our creature. <laughs>